I go up to the tip very often and see the things that have been thrown away. I just, I like the fact that these things are repairable, even though the manufacturer doesn't want us to think so. A massive amount of things that can be repaired that don't need to be thrown away, but people would rather buy new things. Halfway through the material. Yeah. Um, not on one side. I, th I think the Repair Café itself goes back to, right to David Fleming's original thoughts about being able to, um, to live in a sustainable world. Closed loop systems are systems or communities that have worked out how to reuse most of their materials. For a natural ecology this is routine, a necessary condition for its existence. Whereas in an open system such as a market economy, this condition is absent. The energy-intensive, materials-intensive, feedback-blind model of society and economy on which we rely is in trouble from many directions. Transition is a wide-awake, small-scale network of resilience towards which talent and passion are being drawn. The tide is flowing. So following on from David Fleming's original ideas, uh, we've got a movement now which is well established. And I think it's in the everyday implementation of those ideas that you actually get your greater, greatest rewards. Today we had someone who brought in a lamp and it wasn't particularly easy to repair, but it certainly was something that you wouldn't want to throw away. And uh, it was her mother's, her mother's um, suffering with Alzheimer's at the moment. My mum's 87 and she's been really upset about it for months. And luckily one day I was hoovering and I found that the piece that had been broken off and didn't throw it away. Every night she goes to bed, she says, I, I miss my little lamp. So she'll be thrilled. Right, we can pop that. And what there was there was a, a great bond between the person who was fixing and her. It's very generous community spirit. That's all right. That so kind of That's all right. Glad so we much. managed to uh, yeah. to do something. She'll be thrilled. Thank so you. This one's got a sentimental value in that my father bought it to me and uh, he's died recently. Um, the idea is that you'll have them for a few years and then they'll persuade you, you know, to buy something different. Just throw the old one, but it's, it's not on. You just can't go on like that forever. Um, or places like here, which I, I gather are replicated in other parts of the country, once the publicity machine starts moving, I think people would come flocking. It's just such a good idea, rather than things going into landfill. I love it. I also just want him to hang around here a while and watch yeah. people repairing, because he's that's quite great. good at that, but I'd like him to oh, no, be a part of this. Yes. Uh, my son, Chad, he's very good at taking things apart. He's very inquisitive, but he yet doesn't have that ethos of reusing, and he knows how to repurpose, but with a lot of wastage. Um, so I'm bringing him here to help him see that. Like, one small thing is broken on it doesn't mean that it's worthless, that it can still have value and it can still be fixed. So that's the real, in a way, the economic benefit of repair cafes. You actually get people thinking that, well, we can't go on consuming forever. We can't go on taking raw materials out of the ground and then throwing them away or dumping them in the sea. We've got to be able to express our relationship with the material world in different ways. Here, people have something that they need fixing. They're not necessarily tied to the idea of the transition movement. And yet the fundamental message is, in this world, you can do something about what's wrong with it, I think. Um, you can actually take something, take, take it and fix it. I mean, the, the analogy there is it could be the world. You can actually do something about it. So it's got that idea of agency, which is really important. That is, 
you know, the world is in many ways broken, but you can, you can do something about it.